In this video, I'm going to be doing some examples of solving equations in quadratic form. This is going to be part one of two. Just to keep the video short, I'm going to do a couple examples in this video. I'll do a couple examples in the second video. In the uh, second um, video, the examples maybe will look a little more unusual, little unusual circumstances that you might run into. For uh, solving these quadratic equations, I am going to choose a U substitution method just because they fall into that category really, really nice, and it just makes for solving the equation really simple. So the first thing I'm going to do here in this first example, I've got an x to the fourth minus an 8x squared minus 9 equals 0. And I'm going to take a look at these first two terms, and I'm going to focus on the exponents. If my middle term's exponent is half of my first term, then I know this is going to set up really, really nicely for a u substitution because this is I'm going to be able to put it into a nice quadratic that can factor it. All right, so this is definitely an equation that is in quadratic form. So I'm going to use u substitution. I'm going to let my u be the variable in that middle term. So I am going to let u equal x squared. All right, now, when I do that, if you stop and think about this, I'm going to rewrite the equation in terms of u. All right, now, if I say here to begin with that I have a u squared, all right, u is x squared. When I take x squared and square it, that would be a power raised to a power. 2 times 2 is 4, so then that gives me that x to the fourth right there. So finishing this out then, u squared minus 8u, because we said u was x squared, and then minus 9 equals 0. All right, now I have a nice little trinomial here that I can factor by guess and check. So setting this up here, let's see, we'd need a u and a u. To get that 8 in the middle, I'm going to need a 9 and a 1. And it needs to be a negative 8, so let's make that a negative 9 and a plus 1. Now that I've got it factored, I can set each factor equal to 0. And on this one, I can have u equal to 9. And on this one, I've got u equal to negative 1. Now, a lot of times, probably the number one uh, mistake would be uh, students want to stop right here and say those are the answers. However, you have solved for u in this scenario, and the original equation is in terms of x, so that means we're not quite done yet. So at this point, you need to replace u with your x squared. So let's make that note right here. Let's replace <clears throat> u equal x squared. All right, so in other words, that u I'm going to replace back with my x squared so that I'm actually working with an equation in terms of x. So then I'd have an x squared equals 9. We can solve that real easily by taking the square root of both sides. So x equals plus or minus the square root of 9, which is 3. All right, doing the same thing on this part of the equation, replacing that u with the x squared. x squared equals negative 1. All right, taking the square root of both sides, x equals plus or minus. I'm actually going to write this one out so we can see it. Square root of negative 1, that's going to lead us to our imaginary solutions. So x equals plus or minus an i right there. Okay, now, with, as with any equation, not just equations in quadratic form, you should always take your answers, check them back in that original equation to make sure they work. All these do work. Your plus or minus 3 works. You've got two real solutions. You've got two imaginary solutions. Okay, so for that first one, straightforward. Okay, now, for this second example here, if you just at first glance, you may not realize that this is an equation in quadratic form, but it really is. If you think about, well, maybe I could rewrite that square root as an x to the one half, and then picture, oh yeah, that really is an x to the first, you definitely have that scenario of that middle term's exponent being half of the first one. Okay, so I would actually rewrite. So let's actually rewrite so we can see it. Um, 2x, and then let's go ahead and put that 1 in there so that we see that the exponent 1 is there. And then minus x to the 1 half minus 10 equals 0. Okay, now you can real easily see there 1 half for your exponent here, 1 for your exponent here. It's going to work really nice. All right, so I'm going to start off by letting u be the middle variable term there. So I'm going to let u equal an x to the one half. All right, then when I go to rewrite, I am going to have a 2u squared. Again, because x to the one half squared would be an x. All right, and then minus 
u minus 10 equals 0. All right, again, a nice quadratic right here now that I can factor. So we'll go with a 2u and a u for our guess and check. And then, let's see, factors of 10, I need to get a 1 in the middle. Let's put a 5 here and a 2 here. I need a negative 1, so that 5u right there needs to be negative. And then plus 4u right there will give me the negative 1u in the middle. All right, now, setting both of these equal to 0. Now, let's go ahead and add 5 to both sides. So 2u equals 5. u would equal 5 halves on this one. And on this one, subtract 2 from both sides. u would equal the negative 2. All right, now, again, remember you're in terms of u. That original equation was in terms of x. So then I need to replace u equals my x to the 1 half. So replace u equals x to the 1 half. All right, so when I replace it here, I will have an x raised to the 1 half equals 5 halves. All right, and then some of you might find that to be a little challenging to solve. You can um, maybe just think of it as, okay, well, up here at the very beginning, we had a square root. We changed it into exponential form there. If we go back into radical form, it may be easier for you to see what you're supposed to do. So let's go ahead and rewrite that back as the square root of x equals 5 halves. All right, now solving that equation, hopefully you're really good at that. You realize, oh yeah, I've got to square both sides to get rid of that square root. All right, that's just one way to do it. Lots of different ways to solve that, but definitely one way right there. So then I would be an x on just the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side I'd have that 25 over 4 right there. All right, now doing that to this one over here as well x to the 1 half equals a negative 2. We could do it exactly the same way we did it right here. Or maybe some of you could just look at that exponent and go, okay, I've got to get from an x to the 1 half down to an x. So if I do power raised to a power, if I did a 1 half times 2, that would give me a 1, and I would be right back down there to an x is what I need. So just another way to, to view that and solve it Okay, giving you a couple different choices there. All right, but now power raised to a power, 1 half times 2 is going to give me just the plain x to the first power, which is what I want. And then I would have a 4 right there. Okay, now again, like I said, you always need to check these answers. All right, the 4 is going to be the easiest, so let's check that in there right there. So if I plug 4 back in here, I'm going to have an 8 minus 2 minus 10 all right, which is clearly not going to give me a zero. All right, so checking is important because then that means that x equals 4 is not a solution. All right, and then plugging in that 25 fourths right there, um, it does turn out to solve and work out to zero. So then this being my only solution there. All right, so just a couple of examples here in part one of how you go about solving an equation in quadratic form using this U substitution method. All right, uh, definitely give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, um, and if this was helpful and you need to see more examples, you know, hunt for that part two video on my channel. Thanks for watching.